this computer. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special pop up open book assignment that we actually have tonight. We had to pivot. And so we are doing a special pop up tonight. And when I tell you, I am so excited about this pop up because I get to do it with a great friend of mine. We've known each other for how long? Ooh, look, we get older. 2009. It's been since 2009. So wait, 11 years. We have known each other. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. And we are actually going to do something that we have not done before. We haven't done it this way before. We have not. So now I am going to, um, I'm still having a technical difficulty. Hold on one second. Okay, thank you. So before we get started, um, Pamela McCray and I, we were not only friends, but we met each other uh, at a school in Fort Worth ISD when I first started teaching. I had only been teaching there for like one year. And then the next year, you came. <laughs> so I was still like, a fresh, you know, out of, out of, uh, I would say out of the corporate world um, into teaching. And so it was a whole career change for me, but we're going to, I'm going to give uh, both of us a chance to introduce ourselves. But I want to say from the time that I met McCray and I call her McCray, Pam, sometimes um, she has always had this personality. And I remember when I shared this with her, I was like, this girl is like too happy. Like nobody is that happy all of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told her that. She did. I was trying to be Tell the truth. <laughs> and I was like, I watched her because what, she, what you'll notice about me is I'm an observer. And so I watched her and she genuinely is that person. She lit up every hallway. She walked down the hallway. Hey, sunshine. That's it. I still do that now. I still do it now. <laughs> oh, you still do it when you work too? Oh yes. my gosh. And so when I tell you, she has been a great, great friend. And I am so blessed to have her tonight from the open book. We are doing a special segment now. We originally said this is for educators, but as we continue to talk, this is not just for educators tonight, but this is for anyone and everyone that has a job and that also has an assignment, okay? So what I will say is um, I started in the corporate world back in 2000. I've been working since I was 13, okay? My uncle's- Ooh, right. okay, young one. You know, we, my, my uncle and my grandfather, they didn't play, okay? And so my uncle had a grocery store in Houston. And so I started working there as a little cashier. So while I was working, you know, I graduated and everything. Um, uh -huh. And then I started working for a bank. I, I won't say the name of the bank, uh, but I started working uh -huh. for a bank, okay? And so I worked for that bank for about almost 10 years. But I remember when I started working for the bank, um, I shared with a friend of mine there that uh, I always had a dream to become a teacher, okay? Uh, but when I went to college, I really didn't because, you know, some people back then did not really think the teachers got paid a lot of money and so forth. And so I kind of put it on the back burner and tried to pursue, you know, my business degree because my family uh, they were involved in a lot of politics and not politics, uh, businesses. And so the mm -hmm. politics behind that of you shouldn't be a teacher, try this or try that. Then mm -hmm. I started trying everything. I went to school first to try to be a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. I went to school. That didn't work because I don't like all of that science. OK, um, so I dropped that. Uh, <laughs> I dropped out of that. I was like, can I change my major? Because that's this is not going to work. Yeah, I, I can't do it. And so uh, after that, I just continued with the business um, management degree. So okay. I worked for Chase. And then so my friend one day, I'll never forget, and this is going somewhere. Um, he came up to me because he, I think he was actually leaving that job, but he stopped by my desk. And so he said, so have you given up on your dream? And so I was like, what dream, you know? And he was like, you said you wanted to be a teacher. So I was like, man, you know, I've been doing this for so long. I never thought it was possible because that was not what my degree was in. 
um, as mm-hmm. far as being a teacher. So I just pretty much was like, okay, I'm gonna just do this, uh, just continue to go up the corporate ladder. Um, but I found out that you can become a teacher through an alternative certification program. Mm-hmm. Damn. Right. And so I didn't know that. And so um, a- another friend of mine was so ironic. She was looking to go into teaching that worked at the same company, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, She said, well, I'm going (laughs) for an interview uh, at a job fair. And so I said, well, I'll go, you know, just to get some interview practice or whatever. And I went and it was a lot of people there. I have never gone on an interview for education or anything like that. So I had my resumes and everything. And so this lady, I'll never forget, she had on white. And she walked up to me and she said, Lakeisha. So I was like, how does this lady know my name? And I was like, oh, you know, I got a name tag. On. Uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I thought it was an angel from the Lord. <laughs> you know what? So I was like, you know, how does she know? And I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so she said, there is a um, position that's not listed on that sheet at this campus. Uh, you should go over there and interview with them. And so I was like, I looked over there at the line. The line was long. And so Ooh. I was like, do I want to wait in that line? Because other, you know, I had gone to a couple of more uh, tables or whatever and, you know, kind of interviewed, did all of that. And so when I got over there, I was waiting in the line. So this lady was sitting there talking to the principal. And so she was like, hee, 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 and all of that stuff. But the lady got that job. So I almost got discouraged and walked away. And so when oh. I got to the table, um, I was like, hi, I heard you have a fifth grade reading position just for me. Okay. So she looked, she was like, have a seat, man. <laughs> Lo and behold, y'all, I got hired on the spot. Now take it, I had not taken my certification test. And so when I went out of that room, y'all, I was so excited. I called my mom and I told her about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to pass this test because now I have a job. My life is about to change. I went from nothing but corporate. I have done nothing as far as teaching, okay? But my life literally changed in 2008. I resigned from that bank and I became an educator. And when I tell you my life did change, okay? Um, So that's how I became an educator and I'm going to stop it right there for a second because I want Pam to share with you her story of how she became an educator okay so to those who don't know I am I was born and raised in Kansas City Kansas um so after high school in 99, I went on to attend Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Largest HBCU in the country. If you don't feel like saying Southern, you can just say that and you'd still be correct. Um, hopefully it's still that way today. But anywho, so I um, acquired my bachelor's degree at Southern in elementary education. And then I um, then pursued my master's in administration and supervision, a dual master's degree, and then went on to attend Walden University to um, acquire my PhD in teacher leadership. Now I'm I'm ABD, hold on, (laughs) finish up with a 4.0, all I have left is my dissertation, so that's the point where I'm at. Um, I also taught in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, fresh out of college. Um, Then I moved out to Fort Worth where I taught. And I'll just tell you, my husband was stationed in Shreveport. And basically we knew we were moving towards Fort Worth. And so I was like, you know what? I need to get a teaching job. Now I know I had taught in Baton Rouge, so I had some experience. And so (laughs) me, I've always believed they're working smarter and not harder. So I was like, you need a job in Fort Worth. You know, everybody who applies has to go through that process online. Right. So your application will get lost amongst a lot of other folks. So what are you going to do? Right. So I said, hold on, I'm built different. I got to do something different because I'm trying to give me a job and I'm not even there. Right. 
So what I did was I took it up on myself to send out an email to mm-hmm. almost every principal in Fort Worth ISD. And the email in the subject line read, eager educators seeking new challenges. Uh-oh. And so I attached my resume and did a nice little cover letter and press in. Well, <laughs> nobody contacted me back because I found out that, that when I sent that email, uh-huh. principals had just gone on their summer break. And you know, they only get about three weeks. So what they not right. going to do is check their email. Okay. Right. right. Well, it just so happened that this principal at our old campus. Okay. She <laughs> said something told her to check her email that day. And she checked it. And I got a phone call. And I was in Shreveport. And I had to do a interview over the phone. Okay. I have never done an interview over the phone. I'm like, okay, this is getting ready to be interesting. So she called me. I answered her questions. And then I think one of her questions was like, if you were an animal, (laughs) what animal would you be? (laughs) So I told her that. Wait, I had the same Um, one though. I had the same. I know she's smart. I know that's a personality question. Right. But right. anywho, so I answered that question and she basically called me and said, Hey, look here. I'm hiring you for the position, but everything is frozen right now. <laughs> and we can't pick up any new employees. Okay. So I want you to stay by the phone basically, and I'm going to call you. And she did. She called me. And then um, when I got to Fort Worth, she said, let's meet up at Starbucks so I can at least look at you, see what you look like. And so we met up and that's how I got hired um, in our old district. And I worked in Fort Worth for about five, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40 minutes, <laughs> about eight years. And wow. I became an instructional specialist. So I taught for a total of 10 years. Uh oh, and I've been an instructional specialist for about eight, and I didn't realize it's been that long. I know the time goes by, girl. It goes by so fast. Would you drop your light? (laughs) Yeah, hold on. (laughs) Give me one moment. I'll be right back. So, you know, with that, and like Pam said, you know, God transitioned because, uh, and we're going to talk about assignments you know and how assignments can change from season to season um Mm -hmm. so after you know I taught for about Mm -hmm. eight years in the classroom I then transitioned into a reading interventionist and then uh transitioned now into this role I did it at two different campuses as an instructional support specialist and so our our theme actually for tonight can go not just for teachers but also for any particular type of job you have, okay? Um, Because there is a difference between a job and an assignment, okay? A big difference. A huge difference. So, you know, tonight, we're we're just flowing, y'all. We hope y'all are are enjoying this conversation. Uh, Go ahead and tag some people because uh, we're just flowing tonight and really gonna talk about some things. And so if you think about it as a big umbrella, okay? A job you are definitely getting paid for, okay? You could do anything from being a nurse, being a teacher, working at a factory, working uh, at the local grocery store. All of that is considered a job. But your God-given assignment is what does God want you to do while you are at that job, okay? It's almost like fulfilling your purpose and getting paid to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Pam, what what do you think about that? Like, have you thought about the differences between the two? I have. And um, when I think about a job, I think of something that everybody has to. A job is something everybody has to. It has minimum qualifications. There are many applicants 
it normally is surrounded or based on um, production of something. Mm -hmm. And usually if you have a job, that production is that check right. that you to work towards or a product of that company. A job, it, it's step-by-step -step procedures. It comes with training because they teach you how to do what it is they need done for production purposes. Right. It has a manual okay um now when i look at an assignment though whereas a job is something that everybody has to an assignment is something that i get to oh come on say that again wait a minute say it again wow okay an assignment is more of a i get to most people who are placed on assignment, they are overqualified for jobs, if that makes sense. You're not going to have a lot of applicants who are on assignment normally um, it, because it can't be done by just everybody. Girl, you better preach tonight. I didn't know it was in you. Come on now. <laughs> okay. Now watch this though. See, the product of an assignment mm -hmm. is normally intangible. Right. So whereas your job, that production of that paycheck, yes. that completing that task, an assignment, that product is something that's intangible. And it's normally change or major impact. Mm -hmm. There is no manual when you're on assignment. Mm -hmm. You create your own path. Wow. You do. And many people who see you or interact with you on assignment, yes, they can't fathom. So they normally come to you and see you on your assignment and say, better you than me. That's because they can't even picture themselves Doing that. on that assignment wow. because they weren't created for that. It's you that gets to. Um, on an assignment, it's like you're from the perspective of an eagle. You're looking soaring up top. You right. see the big picture. Um, and I think people who are on assignment, they naturally have recruiting spirits. And what I mean by that, if you go into the classroom, for example, when I taught, I'll never forget in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, there would be teachers. They wouldn't be teachers. They would be potential teachers or teachers who thought about going into the field of education, okay? Right. And they would contact my principal. Well, my principal would say, hey, come up to my campus. And she would send them in my classroom. But see, she sent them in my classroom because she felt as if I had that passion. I was on assignment yes. with these kids. And when they were in there for at least 15 minutes, Everybody who came out of that classroom, oh, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. She could have taken them in any classroom on that campus, but right. she knew that the purpose was, hey, we need some more educators. Yeah. And so she sent them in the classroom of a teacher that she felt was on assignment. Passion was flowing out of my pores. And I believe that people who are on assignment, they stand out so much that they have a recruiting spirit and they don't even realize it. Ooh. So something you get to do. And you know, like, oh my gosh. And, and I will say this uh, with Pam, she's an awesome, when I tell you awesome educator um, and the kids love her. And there was some that she dealt with that, I would get them in fifth grade. She had them in fourth grade. Um, I would send them to her because they tried me daily. <laughs> and I'd be like, here go your baby. I need you to get them together and then send them on back. <laughs> See, and I just saw one of them today. You <laughs> oh my yep. gosh. Uh, and you probably know the main one that we, we just... Oh my goodness, main one that we just stay, stay with it. But you know, in a lot of times, um, if you think about it, when, when you talk about the teaching part, a lot of people say, oh, you know, if I did it for the pay, you know, I'm not doing it for the pay or, you know, teacher's not in it for the pay. You are because it pays your bills first. 
That's a job. <laughs> it does pay and you use that money to pay things, okay? So mm -hmm. we are doing it for that. However, though, the God-given assignment part of us is not doing it because of a paycheck, okay? We are doing it because it's a calling, okay? Everyone has not been given, I should say, the gift and the anointing to teach. <laughs> and I try to let them know, Mary Kay may be what you need to do because you know- So we'll most. let them know. <laughs> That's not a- mm -mm. I mean, and, and I'm just being real in, in, in that because we are seeing more and more, especially in today's society, where, although this is not just education, right now I'm focusing on education, that it is being turned into a job and less of this is a calling or an assignment, which cannot be taken lightly because we are impacting students' lives. Their futures are at stake. And the mindset, okay. if we go into uh, teaching with the mindset of, oh, you know, I'm just teaching uh, fifth grade, you know, and, and things of that sort, it will mess you up. And I will say this, when I first started teaching, y'all, <laughs> I only had an image at that time of kids that I grew up with and the kids that I would see at church and so forth. And so <laughs> at this particular campus I worked at, they said, if you teach there, you can teach anywhere. It was like a, a training ground. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. Okay. Well, I found out because that first year I started teaching. I cried. I would say after probably month three, I remember sitting at my desk and I cried and I said, I cannot do this. I'm about to call my, my former manager and see if I can get my job, my job back mm. at the bank. Okay. But something inside of me, Ooh, I'm trying not to cry. Wow. something inside of me said do not quit don't quit and when I tell you y'all <laughs> I had to come back every day a fresh start and those kids I can remember that first year the group of kids that I have made an impact on my life I pray that I made an impact on theirs but when I tell you they impacted my life. I grew and learned so much okay. about children that particular year. And, and God was, it was so ironic though, although I considered Chase a job, I was also on assignment there and God used the things that I went through there to prepare me for where he was taking me into the teaching field. Had I not gotten rude customers, Hello? Hello? <laughs> I would not no. know how to handle real kids, okay? You can't flip out on customers at the bank. I couldn't flip out on kids, okay? That's I right. had to learn how to control myself. It was like a whole process that I had to go through for these mm -hmm. children. But then once you go through it and start saying, okay, I'm meant to do this, you will see that God gives you guidance. He gives you the yeah. power. He gives you the strength and everything that you need in order to fulfill the assignment he's placed before you. Now, all of those kids in that class, that classroom may not have been my assignment each year, okay? Mm -hmm. I may have just been there to plant a seed or so forth or to water a seed, but there mm -hmm. were some students who yeah. I knew particularly I was there for each year. I was like, oh, he's my assignment. <laughs> oh, she's my assignment. And I knew then. It was not going to be easy, okay? And so every year I had to take some anointing oil, anoint those desks, anoint my classroom, and you have to do what it takes because for a job, we can walk off and leave. It's easy to just say, let me get my purse. Uh, I don't have to work here. Let me go find me another job. But for an assignment, when the yep. job, oh, Lord have mercy. This is ministering to me right now. When the job gets hard, it is easier and God gives you the strength and the ability to complete the assignment. You can't just, you can't just walk away because mm. something there, you're going to feel him holding you there to complete what it is he has set before you. That does not just go for a job. That goes for anything. There's going to be a constant pull 
whether it's yeah. to write a book, whether it's to start that business, whatever it is, if that's he has correct. assigned you to do it, you're not going to feel complete until you do it. You do. That's correct. <laughs> what that's you have to say about that? Because you look like you're about to say something. Come on, girl. No, that's right. It, it, it's <clears throat> when it's your assignment, if you don't do it, it won't get done. Right. You're chosen for a reason to complete certain assignments because God has fully equipped you prior to him sending you or giving you that assignment. Yes. Woo. Fully equipped. Now, sometimes people might say, well, I don't know. Now, sometimes he <laughs> equips you in the tools that you need are deep, deep, deep <laughs> down. Right. <laughs> but they are there. And right. even in that, he wants you to trust him and he wants you to know that, hey, I got you and I chose you for a reason and I got the right one, baby. Right. And, and, and what's so funny is even now, I would say, you know, it's a new school year, y'all, and there we're up against a lot in education. Pray for us. You know, we're up against a lot. And I was just sharing with a group of, of women today. You know, I almost think, Lord, what do you want me to do? You know, do you want me to work from home? Do you want me to go back into the classroom? You know, what is the, am I in the right place? And the Lord says, stand still, complete the assignment. <laughs> I don't care what's going on around you. Trust me to take care of all of that. Stay focused. And, I, and, and, and if you're dealing with distractions right now, because what gets harder when you know you have an assignment, the enemy also can sometimes see that, okay? And will try to bring distractions, okay? To get you distracted on this, on this. Oh, let me do this, this. Okay. But stay focused on your assignment, whatever yeah. that assignment is in that season, because you will realize that the assignment that you have for this season may be totally different than the assignment you had for the last season. You may have a, a new group of, of students. You may have a new boss. You may have the same people you're working with, but those people who were your assignment last season are not your assignment this season or this school year. Yep. And so your focus has to shift, okay? Um, and and I'm, I'm starting to really, really realize that. And we can't take that personally because especially if we were someone's assignment and now their focus has shifted because it can go both ways. We have an, they have an assignment and then other people have an assignment and we could very well be someone's assignment, okay? And so um, just staying focused in the moment, anytime the assignments change. And my thing is this, the good part of that is God would not give you an assignment if he is not always already prepared you, equip you, and will help you through it through to it. get it finished, Okay. Um, because sometimes, you know, he seems a little quiet, you know, but he's not going to put us somewhere and just, you know, let us, oh my gosh, this just didn't work and blah, 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 blah. But God, sometimes you have to go to God in prayer. Okay, Lord, you said this is my assignment this year. I need your help on completing this. Okay. I need some strength. You know, I need some power, <laughs> you know, I need some, whatever I need to get this done. And we, yeah. when we go all about our father's business, that this is what I want to do because I'm doing it as unto him. I want to do it with excellence. When we have those motives, I promise you, God will help you fulfill it every, every time. Every time. Every time. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have something to add? No, you hit every, you hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah, you sure. And and especially y'all, you know, if you're really thinking about education, this is a good time. Don't allow other people's perspectives and their experiences shape you and your thoughts into what education is, because you make it what. It is God called you to make it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if, if God has called you to be a teacher and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm hearing all this stuff about teachers. They're not getting paid enough. They're stressed. They're this, they're that. 
but have you stepped foot in the classroom to see what it is he wants to do through you? So exactly. sometimes we have to put all of the noise That's aside correct. because there are children waiting for you to step into position. Their, their assignments, people are waiting on us to get into position because they're our assignments, okay? So we have to be obedient to God. We have to follow his leading. Um, I just want to encourage everyone tonight, you know, if, if you're struggling with that, um, I, I know what it is to, to work in corporate, uh, in a call center, <laughs> uh, to not be employed, to quit, don't have a job, you know? I know what that feels like, but I can also say in those moments, they had purpose and God was preparing me for something greater. He was preparing me for the next. He was preparing me for the next assignment. And so seek him in that moment. Okay, God, is this my assignment? Not yep. is this the job for me? <laughs> because you go get a job anywhere. I, if I wanted to, I could apply and get a customer service job probably making more than I make right now, okay? But that's not my assignment right now in this season. And so just be encouraged. I pray, you know, that uh, you all will hear God's voice and that he makes it clear as to what your assignment is, where you are, that your perspective will change where you will not think of it as just a job, but this is my assignment. And in that, that you will lean and trust in God to give you the power, the strength, and the ability to not only complete the assignment, but to do it as unto him and do it with excellence. Because we don't want to complete it grumbling and complaining, okay? Oh, Lord, you put me here. These kids get on my nerves. I can't do this. Because we, we can do that too. But uh, you finish the school year and kids pass, you know, have high passing rates. But do they even like you? Do they even mm. know you? You know, mm. so it's a way to do it. Just having the right spirit behind it. And that takes humility. It takes self-awareness. Really having those, um, those reflections pretty much of self. And, and really, because I know it's been a couple of times, well, it, I may have been the problem, you know, and so I'm like, God, help me fix me so that I can still complete the assignment because there's some stuff I'm dealing with. So sometimes we have to yeah. check ourselves because that could also mess us up. Pam, you have any That's words of encouragement? That's true. Um, I was going to say inside of education, just know if you're contemplating teaching or coming into the field of education, just know that there are students who are waiting yes. for you to save their life. If you are looking to work in corporate America and you know it's your assignment, know that there are people who are waiting for you to save their lives. When you're on assignment, you are sort of a big deal. And that's the reason why that assignment is for you. Right. And so I just really want people to know that <clears throat> when you're on assignment, it requires a lot. It does. But the world could change if you accept that assignment and you see it all the way through. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's very important. And as far as education goes and outside of education, build relationships, be relational yes. with students, Ooh. be relational with people that you meet. And it's interesting because I have taught for years and it's crazy because I'm literally loved or hated mm -hmm. and kids normally love me to death <laughs> and adults either love me right. or hate me. It's no middle ground. Right. But right, right. I just know that when it comes to building relationships and understand, you know, I had an aha moment. And I won't say when, but there was a student and I was no longer teaching, but he was <laughs> challenging. And I just remember 
on one of the test days, everybody came in and wanted him to finish testing. Everybody gave him all these these accolades and told him you can do it and this 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 and this and you're awesome and you're great and he just looked at him and didn't didn't take his test and so well they called me the child whisperer so they came and <laughs> called me in so I talked to him and I told him, look, yeah, I need you to go ahead and take this test. But no, what explained <laughs> to me was he said that too. <laughs> he said, Miss McCray, it's sad because every other day of the year, I'm in the office, I'm in ISS, wow. I'm in detention. But the one day these folks need me, they in my face wow. because they want me to pass this test for them. Tomorrow, when this test is over, I'll likely be written up. I'll likely be sitting in the office. I'll likely be back at home. Wow. He said, I laugh on these days because I know they're going to be in my face and they're going to tell me how an amazing person I am mm -hmm. because they want something from me. Right. And I can't get any of this from them after today. And wow. he was a child. He was a child. Now he said, now I'm going to go ahead and take the test because you asked me to, Miss McCray. Right. <laughs> but I want you to know. Right. And so that was so eye-opening to me. Out of the mouth of babes. Right, right, right. And so build genuine relationships yes. with students. Ooh. Genuine and understand that it's don't take it personal. I promise you, nine times out of 10, if little Johnny is going off on you, it has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with him and what may be going on at home or what may be going on at school or at church or wherever. Yes. Don't right. take it personal. Right. Instead, try to figure out what's going on with little Johnny because he is. 10 times out of 10, you're right. a and he's always, <laughs> he's, always up at school. he's never gonna be tardy, he's nope. never gonna be absent. Nope, never, never. And, and, and I wanted to share because you made me think of why you were sharing that two stories. I well, two testimonies really. Um, I remember when I taught fifth grade, uh, one of the students, we were, I don't even know what the lesson was that day. But I remember one of the students, she said, um, Miss Jones, I was Miss Jones then. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, Miss Jones, and she started crying. And she said her dad was blind. And she said that um, I guess some kids had been teasing her or something. And she said that that hurt her feelings because her dad is blind. And when people talk about her, we never know. She was very mature for her age. We never know what people were going through and blah, 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 blah. And so she started crying. So one student got up, went over there, rubbed her on the back. So she's crying. I'm trying to comfort her. So then the other little girl, she starts crying. And then other students started sharing with me different things about family members that had passed away. And all of a sudden around the room, I had probably 10 students. No one knows this, but God himself, I, this is no joke. It was like a glory wave came over that, that classroom. And one little boy, he was crying so much. He went under a table and he was just crying, getting it out. And so back then, my instructional specialist came to the door and she was about to come in there, the coach that, that I had back then. She came in and so she paused and she looked and she's a believer too. And she said, oh, I'm a, I'll be back later. I'll be back. She let them have their moment. After a few minutes, I prayed over that class. After a few minutes, they calmed down, got back into their seats, and got back to work. Now, that was my assignment that year. That wasn't a job. I'll never forget that experience. Never, ever, ever. Who knows what any of those kids could have potentially done? They needed to get that out because of that one moment. Okay, so think about 
things that could potentially happen that are waiting, great things that God wants to do. Uh, another funny, uh, this one is kind of funny, but it's kind of not. So uh, I was working in another district and uh, I was out uh, because I had had a surgery. And I remember uh, my class, I had one little African-American boy that, you know, and I'll just say this, you know, some of them just didn't know what to do with him in the district that I worked for because his, his behavior was not bad. I've seen worse behavior. And so mm -hmm. I had a special way with him. I knew how to handle him. Sit down, be quiet, boy. Come on, let's get to work. And so I was out for a while. He wasn't used to that. He told these people that if they didn't get me back there, he's going to blow that school up. <laughs> and I was like, let me hurry up and get back to school. So when I went back to school, <laughs> of course, he got in trouble. But I was like, baby, thank you for loving me and missing me. But you cannot say stuff like that. Baby, you was his everything. You can't. Just you know, you, understand you was in safe space. I was a safe like, place. Safe space. Yep, and, that's and correct. I love what you said about the relationship part. Be discerning, okay? Um, we never know, like that baby said, what people are going through. And some things are not even directed towards us. It could be mis like misdirected energy um, mm -hmm. from students and even adults. It may have nothing to do with us. So just be discerning. Know when to smile. I would always start each day with a smile. Uh, welcome my students into the classroom. Smile at the, the adults that you work around, wherever you work. Yes. Do you smile? I know we're wearing masks, but people can tell that you're smiling with your eyes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> McCray always smile. I don't think I ever seen her mad, okay? And it helped us. It brightened up our day. You know, when we would see her just full of energy. And then when, now when she was pregnant uh, in that chair... <laughs> She was a little sleepy. I'm like, you okay up in here? <laughs> That's an inside joke. But it was so funny because yeah. her kids kept going. They kept my going. assistant principal came in my room one day and I was knocked out. <laughs> and the kids were just working and quiet. And she just came and rubbed my back and was like, it's okay. It's okay. Those babies were but she, You made it though. You made it. And you made it, I mean, your kids did wonderful on the test and everything that year. <laughs> it's like they teaching themselves. <laughs> oh, I was tired. I would never oh. forget that. It's oh, like, really? you would think if your administrator walk in the class, right. I would jump up. No, right. I didn't. I was so too tired. She already knew you was going to do nothing. She already knew. But y'all, this has been a wonderful night. I hope you guys just enjoyed it tonight. I thank Pam for being special guests. We had to pivot tonight and just do some different things, but this was fun for me. I just want everyone to be encouraged, walk in your purpose, mm -hmm. uh, complete every God-given assignment. We want to leave here empty. Everything yep. he has placed before us, we want to complete it before we leave. And so with that, I want to say good night. Thank you for joining us and be on the lookout. We have some exciting things coming up from the open book. Also follow Pam at Mind Mogul. She's on Instagram. Uh, she's doing some great things and we're going to do some more great things for educators. So be on the lookout for that as well. We hope you all have a great night and be blessed. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>